Euro 2028. Let's talk football. Yes, guys, and welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. And today is another video relating to Euro 2028. And if you're thinking, Cody, why on God's earth are you recording a video on a tournament that's well yet many years away? Well, obviously, the other day I did a video on when the news broke that obviously the United Kingdom and the Republic of Ireland, or should I say England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland will all be hosting Euro 2028 in four years' time, or five years, by the time I'm recording this video. And by the way, guys, the IX video will be uploaded before this, so, if, so by the time this will be uploaded, the IX video will be out. So, um, so yeah, um... <clears throat> So yeah, in today's video, I'm going to give you my problems with Euro 2028 to give my points I want to make and give my honest, um, to give what I think should, would, what I would want for, for the tournament in the UK and Ireland. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Smash the like, subscribe, get your notifications on and yeah, let's get straight into it. Okay, so problem number one for me, it is of course the stadium choices. Yes, of course. Obviously, England, obviously, we would get the most stadiums because in my because we are the bigger country in the UK and Ireland, respectively. Um, so, let's talk about the venues, of course. So, let's start off with the six in England. Obviously, we've got Wembley, the Tottenham, Hot Wembley, the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, the Etihad, Amphi oh, Everton's new stadium, Everton's new stadium, Villa Park and St James's Park. So, the... So the cities obviously are Birmingham, Manchester, Liverpool, London, and Newcastle. Of course, so in England. So Scotland, obviously, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, and the Republic of Ireland all have one stadium each. So obviously Scotland do get Hampden Park. Wales, in fact, they do not get the Cardiff City Stadium, but they get the Millennium, the Millennium Stadium, look, which was, looks absolutely gorgeous, by the way. The Republic of Ireland, of course, get the Aviva Stadium, however... The Aviva Stadium in Dublin. However, Northern Ireland's Belfast choice was Croke, not Croke Park, Caseman Park. And now, here's the problem with me. So, out of all these venues, there's some pretty big stadiums missing out in this for the tournament. However, but I'll get onto that in a minute. So yeah, my problem with the stadiums, it is Caseman Park. And I have no offence, but I might have a lot of subscribers who are who are from Northern Ireland. So Northern Irish fans, feel free to have a discussion in the comment section and I'll happily join in. The thing is with Caseman Park, I'll put a picture of it on the screen. It generally looks abandoned. It looks abandoned, even though it won't look like that for four years' time, I hope. However, um, Northern Ireland... They're the smallest country to host it in the UK. Because Northern Ireland... Right. Northern Ireland... Um, say... Scot say... The SFA, the Scottish FA, and the, the FA... Um, obviously, the England. England, of course. We do have money to renovate stadiums. Um, obviously, there's obviously been talks, I think, about... Villa Park and St James's Park being renovated. Obviously, I think in the Gallagher end at St James's Park, they wanted that, they wanted that to be renovated. I'm not sure in Villa Park about Villa Park, but I think that's what my dad told me. Um. Now. And now. I watched um, a video on the news on the internet last night relating to Caseman Park. Uh, by the way, I've been, been go I've been actually been Googling it for the last few days. Um, and obviously, um, they, apparent, even Dublin, obviously, the Dublin will be a partner as well to help. So, so our government will give the funds for Caseman Park. The, the Irish government will give fun funds to Caseman Park. So, so basically, obviously, it hasn't been... So the project to rebuild it was going on for 10 years. For 10 years. So if they were to have that as a venue, they need to act They need to act quickly and fast. However, even though it's four years, it's four years' time, so they, so they have no issue. So they would have no... So they do have time, but, like, I mean, 
when it comes to near it, they have to act fast. They need to get it done. So, like, they just can't have Caseman Park abandoned. So, if you look at the pitch, right, I'll put, I'll put it back on the screen now. The pitch is literally co covered, of, covered of weeds. It's disgusting. It really is. And I think, from what I had a... David Healy, we all know David Healy, of course, former Northern Ireland legend, by the way, Linfield manager. Um, he said that the IFA do not put enough money in in the football association, in that in the football association, and in for football. Um, and then, and he said, obviously, all the other associations do, but we're just sitting back. In my opinion, I do feel that for Northern Ireland because. They are a passionate country. Don't get me wrong. They are passionate for football, especially Linfield. Um, however, but Winter Park, though, now I, now I do understand because it only holds 16,000, not 30,000. However, though, at the same time, with it being the National Stadium and not Caseman Park, with it being abandoned and, and all that, it's just really weird, but... And obviously, let's talk... So that's Northern Ireland's controversy done. Because I feel like Northern Ireland, the case for Park is probably the controversial pick for me. So yeah, let's talk about the Republic of Ireland. Of course, the Aviva Stadium. Of course, it was due to host Euro 2020. However, because of COVID, um, the Irish government couldn't give um, UEFA the minimum um, requirements for fans to fit in at the Aviva. So they had to um, be pulled out as a host. Not to be not replaced, fully dropped, and I felt sorry because I, I would have loved the Aviva to have Euro twenty twenty. I would absolutely, I would have loved it. Cause, 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 could you imagine though if the Republic of Ireland actually qualified, and they had home advantage, and they had home advantage, that would be incredible. But it's a shame. However, though, it's it's getting the Europa League final this season. And he's getting the, the next Euros after Germany, which is absolutely amazing. And I love... Oh, by the way, guys, I've been, I'm, I really want to go to the Aviva. I really want to go to the Aviva for ages now. Um, however, the, the stadium that misses out from actually still in Dublin is actually Croke Park. And now Croke Park, it has actually been used for football. Not Gaelic football, for football, for football before. When I was saying, I think when the Aviva was getting built. About the Aviva's only like 12 years old. Near about 12, 12 years old. Because it only opened in like 2010. 2010 or 2009, I'm not sure. I'm not sure because obviously the Republic of Ireland... Football team obviously played at Croke Park for their World Cup qualifiers. Um, however, it's now been used for Gaelic football. However, the GAAA, the GAA, I don't, I don't know what that means. By the way, let me know in the comments. Uh, is something is that Gaelic Association or some something? I don't know, but um, they actually in what they allowed Croke Park to be included in the bid. However, the the IFA, no, the FI, the FAI, sorry, the Football Association of the Republic of Ireland, not the Irish FA, which is the Football Association of Northern Ireland. So, yeah, so yeah, it's confusing, but um, yeah, obviously, Croke Park it holds like nearly the same capacity as Wembley. So that's the Irish Wembley, by the way, like ninety thousand or something like that. It's mad, and that's not been picked. Absolutely incredible, it really is. It, it looks so nice, by the way, Crow Park, and I would recommend going there one day if it's if football is ever being used there again, or or if you're an Irish person who bought say like Taylor Swift tickets for a concert or something like that, I would recommend you go in because it looks so good. Uh, even though I've never been, but yeah, Wales. Wales, I have no problems at all with Wales. The Principality Stadium, the, the, or the Millennium Stadium, as I call it, it looks absolutely stunning. It really is. Uh, even though it's been more used for rugby now for football, but however, 
Um, however, um, apparently, what the Welsh FA are saying, of course, Gareth Bale said this as well, he would want the, Mill the Millennium Stadium to host the opening game. The opening game of the tournament. So that would mean Wales would be in like the first group, like Group A. So, so um, it would be so it's um, it would be nice actually for Wales to have the opening game actually because instead of having it at Hamden or at Wembley or something like that. But yeah, Scotland, now Glasgow. Oh boy, it's football mad. Obviously, Hamden Park, fair enough. But however, they could have at least added Celtic Park at Ibrox, or Ibrox. Because, but the thing is, I said this last night, and I, I mean, to say, if Scotland play, Scotland play at Hamden, Scotland play at Hamden, and Scot say Scotland play Spain at Hamden, and Portugal play at Italy, Italy at Celtic Park, Celtic Park or Ibrox, it's going to be absolutely chaotic. Because, or say if Scotland get England at Hamden, and if Portugal get Spain at Ibrox or something like that, but it would be chaotic. Because if you look at it, Scotland, England would have to be an early kickoff. Ha would have to be an early kickoff. Because, say, they wouldn't do this for Euros. Or even though games normally kick off, say, at 2 o'clock or something like that. So that, could, that would have to be a 1 o'clock kickoff. Because, they would have to have loads of police for a Scotland England game. Loads of police. So that's one so that's problem. So that's another problem actually, the policing. So say I'll get on with that more on that in a minute for the next problem. But obviously And also they, they couldn't why couldn't they add Murrayfield? Well saying that though, they could have had the Scottish Rugby Football Union. And they would have had a chat with them to see if they would allow Murrayfield to be used. To be used for for Euro twenty twenty eight for Edinburgh for Edinburgh's venue. So Scott, now let's talk about England. Obviously, there's been a lot of talk with our venues. So say let's talk about Liverpool, Liverpool, because obviously people would expect Anfield to be on there, but no, no, it's not. Obviously, Everton's new stadium by Bradley Moore Docks being used, going to be used. Um, however, as well, um. Anfield, obviously Anfield is the home of Liverpool Football Club, of course. Um, however, for pitch requirements, UEFA has said the pitch has to be 105 metres long, but Anfield is only 101 metres. So, so really, and of course, they wouldn't allow any fo English football matches to play at Anfield, not in the Premier League, of course. Not in the Premier League, but I mean like, you know, like England, na England national team. So... And now for Manchester, of course, Old Trafford. Don't come at me, right, United fans. But in my opinion, Old Trafford is getting too old. It's falling apart. And thankfully, it's not been used. Because obviously, the Etihad is more modern, is new. Um, and in my opinion, the better looking stadium. Even though Old Trafford, by the way, it is iconic. Same as Anfield. But, but I mean, like, with Old Trafford, it's getting too old now. It really is getting old. Um... Um, so, hmm, so really, I think that all the football associations should have been careful of what they pick. But in my opinion, I don't, I like all the venues, don't get me wrong, but I, there's some problems I do have with them. So, so yeah, problem number one was to say, problem number two, hooliganism. And now, now this is the problem, biggest problem, hooliganism. Of course... We all know with England fans can be absolutely hooligantic in major tournaments. We've seen it so many times in the past. The last time that obviously we had the Euros, well, the first time we had the Euros was obviously in nineteen ninety six. No trouble there. Well, apart from there, apart from there was a few trouble, few trouble before the um, Scotland game at the old Scotland game at the. Before at the old Wembley, obviously with fans getting arrested, of course that's what you expect for an England Scotland game, really. But mainly the high risk game in any major tournament, it is of course England versus Germany, and now obviously 
there's a load of hooliganism surrounding England and Germany. Even they don't play each other. Say, like, World Cup 98, there was a load of fights with Germans and English, and English people um, in the streets of Marseille. And obviously, England fans, obviously, Euro, 20, Euro 2000 against Germany four years later, f- battling out in ch- throwing chairs and they even had water cannons to separate the fans in, sh- in Chalera, by the way. Well, Euro 96, obviously a lot of England fans attacked a couple trying, trying to drive home through Trafalgar Square. But what, why they got attacked? Because their car was German. And now, obviously, Germany had beaten us on penalties in the semi-finals to eventually win the Euros at Wembley against the Czech Republic. So, um, and now, obviously... Euro 16, obviously, with England kicking off with Russian fans. And even even Wales fans, te- e- England and Wales teamed up with each other to fight Russia in, like, Lance or somewhere like that. I don't, I don't know where in France, but... Or in Marseille, it's like, we're England and Wales! We know, we know who we are. We know who we are. We're England and Wales! And I like that. that was like, I like that, that Wales and England have teamed up. But, not, but yeah, um, so say, and obviously, we all know the Euro 2020 final between England and Italy at Wembley, load of ticketless England fans tried to break in to Wembley. It's stupid, it really is stupid, but however, I understand, because obviously everyone in the whole country would want to see England's first major final in 56 years. Um, obviously, I would love, I would have loved to be that bit been at Wembley. I don't care, even if we, we lost, we lost by the way. But I mean, like, I don't care, even if we'd won, I would have absolutely loved it to be there, to be there, um, to be in London, to be at Wembley for a final of the Euros. Um, but yeah, obviously, England Germany, of course, is more hooligan, hooligantic rivalry. If you know what, they, obviously they would have load of police, load of arrests, load of police dogs, riot police. So pretty much problem number two is obviously England fans, because England fans can be hooligantic. If you know what I mean. So um, to be fair, Scottish fans could be can be like that as well, but more it's more England, so it's more English fans. So so yeah. Problem number two, hool- hooliganism. Oh, in fact, as well, actually, Netherlands, Netherlands, Germany as well. That's a rivalry that shouldn't be a high risk as well because G- Germany and Holland despise each other. So, so yeah. Problem number three is traveling. It's traveling and ske- traveling and scheduling. Of course, scheduling. So when the fixtures are. So say, so say for instance, if all. No. So yeah. So the scheduling would be packed because we don't know where. Whereabouts teams are playing. To so say, England could have one game at Wembley, one game at the Aviva, and one game at Hampden Park, or at Hampden Park or something like that. So we would only have one game at Wembley. So, so pretty much means traveling everywhere. So, um, traveling, traveling. So say, so say if it's. To say if it's England, say if England play, um, say if, say in the quarterfinals, right, for example. So, say if Wembley, say if the Wembley semi-final was on one side and say this side is the Wembley side of the draw and Hampden Park is on this side. It's like this side of the draw. As an example, England get Wales at the Principality, at the, at the Millennium. And and say England play a round of sixteen game at Caseman Park, and then have to travel all the way. So say we could have, say our training base would be at Sir, would be at St George's Park, right? And then we would have to travel all the way down to Cardiff for the quarter final against Wales. So that would be unfair. Say to be fair, I kind of understand. What, say with the Irish teams, say Northern Ireland and, and the Republic of Ireland, so they can have two games at say at their grounds, then one game at say the Etihad, or 
Everton's new stadium, as an example. And then, so, and then obviously semi-final, in my opinion, would, so semi-final would be, say, at Wembley, Hamd Wembley and Hamden. So Hamden would have one semi-final. Wembley hosts in another semi-final. And obviously Wembley would be hosting the final. The final, of course. So, um, so I think the travelling could be a chaos, you know. Especially with with money, money prices going up, and obviously the cost of living crisis in the UK, um, it's going to be chaotic. I can just tell. So yeah, number problem number three: traveling and scheduling. Number four. Yeah. Oh, I forgot what number four was now. So yeah, as I was saying about no, yeah, number four: qualific the qualification process. Yes. Sorry, guys, I forgot about that. So, qualif the qualification, um, obviously the European qualifiers um, process. So, obviously, normally, host nations would automatically qualify for a tournament. However, with it being five home, home nations, or five home host nations, I think, I did, I mentioned it on the previous video, Euro 28 video. UEFA had confirmed that two, sa two safety net positions would be reserved for two of the hosts. So who would have the best record in qualifying without qualifi qualifying automatically would be... Would qualify, pretty much. So in that case, England would be one of them. And Northern Ireland... I don't think Northern Ireland would be, because obviously Northern Ireland... Are, are, only qualified once for the Euros was in fact in 2016 in France in France so it would be out of Scotland Wales and the Republic of Ireland however the Republic of Ireland the recent two qualif qualifications was through the playoffs but the one from 1988 they finished top Scotland they hadn't qualified mainly for Euros since 96 of course but they qualified through playoffs in 2020 Wales Qualify for back-to-back -back Euros automatically in group stages, by the way, not through ho through host nation. Um, at that case, Wales had qualified more t times than Scotland have. But even though Scotland have been in the Euros more than Wales, but I mean in recent years, Scotland haven't been in more Euros than Wales. So at that case, it would be England, England and Wales. So say, say the two safety net positions would be reserved for England and Wales. However, in, the FA have said we would reject... The FA rejected it because we want to be in the qualifiers so we can prepare better for the tournament. So, and I like that, but I would love to be automatically qualified, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, um, that's my four problems done. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Smash the like, subscribe, get your notifications on. And thank you for watching. I love peace and seconds.